Hey there. Um, hope you're doing well today. Hope you're enjoying math. I've got some examples from the real world, um, some problems I want to present to us, and we'll go through together. And what what this one will involve is setting up um, some algebraic equations, and these will be one-step equations, which means they'll take just one step to solve, which is nice. Um, the difficult part will be actually setting up the equation. And if, if it's not entirely clear how I'm moving from the, the word problems to the equation, that's okay. Uh, you'll, you'll be practicing that a lot, and you, you've got time to really hone that skill. The main part for this lesson will be actually going, um, just solving the one-step equations. But I want to show you how uh, there could be real-life situations which would require um, a one-step equation to solve. So, a uh, couple examples based in nature, and then another example that's based in um, solid geometry. And so these are these are you know kind of real situations in which you would use your one-step equation skills to solve. So uh, let's let's go through them. Um, a certain python is known to have a mass of 50 kilograms by itself. Uh, you know, it's over over 100 pounds. Recently, it seems to have eaten a pretty large creature because its stomach is bulging massively. So, um, you know, we've got a python. You've seen pictures of these, you know, where it's got this. It's it's just eaten something, so it's got this big. Yeah, the thing it ate is, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so it seems to have eaten something. Okay, so now we weigh it uh, because we're curious, and, and now th now. Th the python seems to have a mass of 60 kilograms. Um, what is the mysterious now eaten creature's mass? Um, okay, and I say mass. Oh, we're dealing with kilograms. It's a, a measure of mass or how much matter is is in something. Uh, you can think of it as its weight. Um, you know, because we can convert between pounds and kilograms, but. Really, weight is a measure of of the force of gravity acting on something. Anyway, don't sweat it. We're talking about how big this thing is now and how big it used to be. Okay. So okay. So let's do, let's translate this into algebra. Okay. So now, um, so it used to have a mass of 50 kilograms, but it ate something. So its its mass was increased by however much. Um, you know the mass of that creature it ate, um, and so once it ate it, it it now has now the python has a mass, a collective mass of of 60 kilograms. Okay, so its starting mass plus what it ate is is now um, its mass. Okay, uh, after yeah. Okay, so so let's solve this. Um, we want to get x by itself. What we want to see is x equals some stuff, and when we see that, you know, this will be the value of x. That's, that's why we want to get x by itself because then it'll be obvious what x is because it, it's equivalent to whatever's on the other side of the equation. So we want to isolate the variable or get x by itself, and in order to do that, we need to uh, undo any operations in which x is involved. So, um, so x is being added to 50. So in order to do undo that, we would subtract 50. Now, if we're going to subtract 50 from this side of the equation, we have to subtract 50 from this side of the equation um, to keep the equation balanced, to, to ensure that the equation is saying something that's true. So I'm going to um, subtract 50 from both sides. So when I subtract 50 from this side of the equation, 50 minus 50, that's 0. So that's gone, which is what our goal was. So all we have left on that side is x, which is that's nice. That's what we wanted. Um, so then 60 minus 50 is 10. So the mass of whatever this python ate is 10 kilograms, right? And so the one step to solve that was subtracting that 50 to get x by itself, right? So the mass of that thing was 10 kilograms. You know, 20 something pounds. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's a cat or, you know, a giant rabbit. I don't know. Okay. 
Uh, let's move on to one that's a little bit more complex. So one third of the atoms in water are oxygen atoms, uh, which you know you you may have heard of H2O. That's the chemical name for water. Uh, what's that? What that is saying is that there are two hydrogen atoms in in a water molecule and one oxygen atom. So one out of the three atoms in a, a molecule of water are oxygen atoms. So let's just write that, you know, mm, yeah, let's write that. So one third of the atoms. Now, if, if you're doing, uh, a lot of times of means mu you're multiplying. Um, definitely if it's uh, some fraction of some other number or a percent of some other number, you, you multiply. So one third of the atoms would be one third times, you know, let's call it A, the number of atoms. Uh, so one third of the total number of atoms is oxygen, or are oxygen atoms. Okay, so moving on, a certain, you know, we need more information because we've got two unknowns here, uh, but you need as many at least as many equations as unknowns in order to solve for them. So we would need at least two equations to solve for these two variables. Or we need to replace one of these variables with an actual number um, so that we can so that we can solve it. So let's keep moving. A certain snowflake has one hundred eighty billion oxygen atoms in it. So and that's that's true. That I mean you know, every snowflake has a different number of of atoms, um, but that's entirely realistic. Uh, 180 billion oxygen um, atoms. So, a certain so assuming the snowflake is made up entirely of water, which you know, which is not going to be exactly. There'll be a tiny little dust particle called the condensation nucleus, uh, uh, to which the water molecules attach when the snowflake is being formed. Anyway, assume it's all water. Um, how many total atoms are in this snowflake? So one third of the atoms are oxygen atoms. Well, there's 180 billion oxygen atoms. So I could I could rewrite this as one third of the atoms in the snowflake um, is 180 billion. And just I'm going to write 180 because I don't want to write out all the zeros for billion. So we'll know that this stands for billion. Uh, our units will be billions of atoms. Okay, so one third of the atoms is 180. So if we can solve for a, we'll answer the question. So what? Do, so a is being multiplied by one third. So we so we need to divide by one third to um, get a by itself, uh, which is equivalent to multiplying by three over one. See if if you multiply three over one times one over three, what happens? You get three times th you're going straight across. Three times one is three, one times three is three, three divided by three is one. One times a is just a. So if we multiply one third a times three over one, uh that means one times a, which is just a. You get a by itself, so that's nice. Okay. Um, so if we're going to multiply this side by 3 over 1, we need to multiply this side by 3 over 1, also known as just 3. So let's do 180 times 3. I'll do that out by hand. It's a little practice of multiplication. 3 times 0 is 0. 3 times 8 is 24. Carry the 2. 3 times 1 is 3, plus the 2 is 5. So uh, the answer would be 540 billion um atoms total in that snowflake totally realistic atoms are tiny all right last one the volume of a cube is its linear dimension to the power of 3 the volume of a certain cube is 27 cubic meters what is the length of its sides what's the measure of its linear dimension okay so what is all that saying here's a cube like um so if this side length is um 
x, then by definition of a, of a cube, then this you know this height has to be x, and then this depth has to be x. You know this so this so x would be it's it's the measure of its linear dimension. So the volume, which is the amount of space that this cube encloses, would be that length um, cubed. So so the volume equals let's call it x cubed. Um, so we've got a volume of a of a particular cube that's 27 cubic centimeters. So it's 27 uh, cubic centimeters. That's just the units over there. So 27 is that side length or the linear dimension cubed. Okay. So we want to get x by itself, but right now it's in the middle of being cubed. So how are we going to undo that to get it back to being just x? Well, uh, if it's being cubed, I could take the cube root, cube root, and uh, um, either have to have the cube root of numbers memorized, um, you know, similar to the square root, um, or if your calculator has a cube root button, you could type in the number that you're cube rooting, and uh, then hit the cube root button, and it'll tell you the cube root. Uh, um, or you can do another thing you can do on your calculator if you don't have um, you know this cube root memorized is the cube root of something is that something to the power of one third okay just like the square root of something is that thing to the power of one half okay um, here's why well nah, that's that's for another time okay so w we need to undo this cubing so let's cube root um, so we need to cube root both sides, so if we do that to the right side, we're left with just x, and then we need to cube root the other side of the equation, because um, we did that, uh, we got to do the same thing to both sides of the equation. So the cube root of 27 is 3, uh, or you could type that in your calculator, maybe I should just show you. Um, do I have it? Yeah, I don't have a cube root button, so I could do 27 to the power of where's my power button actually uh, I forgot where it is on the calculator anyway forget it um, 27 to the power of one third is 3 in other words 3 times 3 times 3 is 27 uh, 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27 so 3 cubed is 27, so 27 cube rooted is 3. So uh, x equals 3. And now, what are our units? The volume was in centimeters cubed or cubic centimeters, so uh, the linear dimension would be 3 centimeters. All right. So there's a, there's a, f a few one-step equations, and based kind of in real situations or semi-real situations in which you'd find yourself. Um, so there you go.